WordPress tips. Today we're covering 11 beginner tips for WordPress. It's a mix of terminology, features, and concepts around our favorite open source website building solution, WordPress. This video is aimed at beginners that want to get a jump start getting to know the important areas of WordPress. I won't be diving deep into each area. Think of it as a checklist of sorts, something that gives you the general idea so you're not completely lost when you're neck deep in all the things. It's a collection of frequently asked questions I'm still getting on my videos mixed with some other important areas I think you should know. As always, if you find today's video helpful, please give it a like, consider subscribing, and simply share this video on your favorite social media platform. If you want to stay up on weekly WordPress news, be sure to check out the WPMinute.com. Number one, WordPress.org versus WordPress.com. If you're brand new to WordPress, you might come across this discussion at some point. Do you need WordPress.org or do you need WordPress.com? WordPress.org is the epicenter of the open source project. You can download WordPress core plugins and themes. You can create an account and post in forums for volunteer led support, or more importantly, get involved with the open source project. WordPress.com is owned by Automatic, the commercial entity run by co-creator of WordPress, Matt Mullenweg. Think of .org as do-it-yourself, while WordPress.com, you have it all done for you. The hosting, the support, and some other value adds like Jetpack plugin. It's Automatic's way of earning a healthy income and making the experience of operating WordPress about 10% better. The market has plenty of options for hosting WordPress for you. There are fantastic ho hosting companies like Bluehost, Pressable, Kinsta, Big Scoots, and Hostinger, all with their own value adds. Or find your own host or build your own server. That's the great thing about WordPress and open source. Number two, themes and plugins. What makes WordPress so great, aside from being open source, is the massive theme and plugin ecosystem. Tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands, of developers and designers from all over the world who create new designs for WordPress or new features for WordPress. WordPress themes is uh, the look and feel of your website. When you install a new theme, expect it to change the layout, the colors, and the fonts generally. Some themes introduce new features, but I largely want you to focus on selecting a theme that gets you at least 80 to 90% to your design goals. I don't think there ever is a perfect theme for all needs. You'll need to look through designs from brands you can trust. Plugins are packages of code you can install on your WordPress website. You find and install plugins to do more things with WordPress. You can find plugins that help you create new photo galleries, sell products, create contact forms, protect you from spam. The options are endless. There's lots to search through, whether it's on WordPress.org or in your WordPress dashboard. Speaking of the dashboard, the admin dashboard. This is the behind the scenes of your WordPress website. Like many other admin dashboards you log into, even if it's another website building tool that you're using, it's the place you go to administrate your entire website. Generally, the changes you're making in the admin dashboard are affecting what's happening on the front end of your website. A few things that I want to point out that are relevant to today's video. Number one, depending on when you're watching this video, the WordPress admin dashboard might look vastly different. There are plans to work uh, on this as early as 2024 to improve that experience. Congrats if you're watching this in the future. And number two, as you install new themes and plugins, your admin experience can change. Generally, you're working in the context of the left admin bar to find those new features you've installed. You'll see this area grow and expand as you add more features to the website. If you're installing third-party themes and plugins, always check with your vendor for support. They should guide you on where everything is and how to operate it all. Number four, the front end or the customizer. You will notice that when you're logged into your WordPress admin that the admin bar appears on the top of your website. You have a collection of quick actions you can take like adding new pages or posts, but aside from viewing your website, you might be there to dive into the customizer. The customizer is a bit of a legacy thing in WordPress. Again, depending on what theme you're running or what year you're watching this, it might not be relevant to you. The customizer is a special area you will browse to in order to customize some WordPress themes. It depends on the theme, so there could be a lot of options or just a handful. Generally, themes that use the customizer are allowing you to change all the design and layout aspects of your website. Fonts, colors, heading sizes, default blog and page layouts. 
leading up to an infinite amount of possibilities. If you're using a block-based theme, you'll probably want to look into the site editor. Number five, the site editor. Still in its early days, the site editor is what's taking the place of the customizer and help carrying WordPress into the future. Remember when I said this video is just touching on these very basic areas of the software? I could spend hours here expanding every section of it all for you. My goal is to at least make you aware of it. The site editor will be your home base for selecting your block-based themes, default colors, fonts, site-wide content width, creating templates, and a whole lot more. It's also the home to your theme's patterns, your save patterns, and managing more advanced theme features. So why is this so important now? Because this is where you might be coming to set your homepage template, customize that template, edit your primary navigation, and set up your headers and your footers. Which leads us all to number six, templates. This is where things can get sticky, so hang with us. Templates are the underpinning code that helps pull big layouts and features of your WordPress website together. When you're building a template, you're essentially assembling a bunch of code to present your content to your visitors. Yes, it's visual, but it's the blueprint is how you can consider it. Don't confuse templates with patterns. We'll get there in a moment. But templates allow you to make your website more dynamic. For example, there's a template that shapes your homepage. There's a template that shapes your blog page. There's a template that shapes what a post or a page looks like. Within the template, you're placing template parts, patterns, blocks, and maybe other code to design the experience of that template. Templates are then reused across your website. You can have one template for all your pages, or you can have five different templates for five different pages. You have the power to control all of that here in the site editor, if you dare. Number seven, template parts. Template parts are parts of a template, reusable parts that you might want to use in different areas across your website. For most of us, that's a simple header and footer template part. So why confuse us with template versus template part. Having template parts means that you have a more scalable way, organized way, of interchanging these sections across your site. You might want to have different footers load on different pages. You wouldn't want to recreate those footers every time, especially if you have hundreds of thousands of pages and you don't want to do it across one individual template for all these different pages. So you create two different template part footers, and then you dynamically swap them out across your templates. Swap them, edit them, and use them where you want. It's about flexibility. Number eight, patterns. This brings us to patterns, which are sort of like templates, but are specifically for containing blocks. Think of blocks as the smallest unit of code in WordPress, and then placing one or more blocks together to accomplish something greater. That's a pattern. You reuse these patterns, if you desire, across your website. Patterns aren't just loaded into templates, but also in your pages and your posts. Patterns could be a big hero section on your homepage, which is, which is a collection of an image, a headline text, and a call to action button. That's a smattering of blocks all saved together to create a pattern. Patterns generally have a style or could be categorized into important design aspects of your website. Again, for instance, a hero section, a pricing table, newsletter content upgrade in line to your blog posts, all could be done with patterns. It's especially, it especially helps when you want uniformity across your website or your business. Why spend a bunch of time recreating these frequently used sections when you can build them once and even share them with your team? When you hire someone to help with the website and they say, hey, how did you make that cool looking hero section you put on the homepage? I want to put it on our product page. You can say, use the hero pattern that I already created. Patterns are fun. Number nine, blocks. If you can't tell, we funnel down from the widest areas of your WordPress website. There's WordPress itself, there's themes, templates, template parts, patterns, and now blocks. As I mentioned earlier, you can think of blocks as the smallest unit when building your website. But that doesn't mean that each block is small or insignificant. See, when you write a sentence in the post editor, the one sentence is a block. You can grab it, move it around the page, move it into a column block, turn it into a headline block. There are endless choices. Blocks can be text, an image, a layout container, a grid of WooCommerce products, a Gravity Forms embedded page on your website. It's infinite. Each block has its own options or settings, generally in the block settings tray, while you're working in the editor. 
If you're new to this stuff, I can't urge you enough to expand the document overview section while in the editor. It'll show you all of the blocks you've created and you have a more top-down view of how you've built out your pages or posts using these blocks. When you're moving blocks about, it's so much easier to move them on that list than it is to really dial them in in the editor section. It's a huge benefit when you have so many on a page. This is another section I could spend a ton of time on, but I just want to see the overall concept to you. If you want more basic one-on-one -on -one block stuff, please comment below, and I'll try to make another video about this stuff. Number 10, so is this Gutenberg and the classic editor? So is this Gutenberg? Sort of. Again, depending on when you got started with WordPress or what your experience level with WordPress is, you might have heard of this thing called Gutenberg. Let me sum it up as quickly as possible. When WordPress started to reinvent itself through the idea of blocks, patterns, templates, etc., Gutenberg was born. It was a plugin that early adopters could install on their WordPress website to get a taste of what's to come with blocks. You were sort of a beta tester, getting the ideas down of what we now know as just regular old WordPress. Then came a time where the WordPress team felt like Gutenberg was stable enough, with a good enough feature set, to bake it into the core experience of WordPress. Thus, like I said, it's what we have now as the core experience. Gutenberg, the plugin, still exists. It's still a great way to try new features coming to WordPress. If you want to stay ahead of the curve and get some cool features or even try some experimental features, running the Gutenberg plugin might be for you, just maybe on a testing site. Oh, and one more thing. If you don't like Gutenberg, you can install the classic editor plugin, which brings us back in time about five years as of this recording to see how WordPress was, at least when you were dealing with pages and posts. Number 11, should I be using a page builder or a third-party theme? If you installed a fresh new version of WordPress at the time of this recording, you'd get to experience one of my favorite default themes to ship in a very long time, and that's the 2024 theme. If you've gone through the areas I mentioned above, like templates, template parts, patterns, blocks, and it's just really not clicking for you, or you just want to try something new, that's when you might want to explore a page builder plugin or a feature-packed theme. Let me just throw this caveat out there. I think the best page builder plugins and feature themes are the ones that play really well with the core WordPress experience. And in my opinion, that's at least with patterns and block systems that we have today. I know I keep saying this, but I just want to get ahead of the YouTube comments. I could spend hours briefing you on this. This video is just for quick awareness. There's a bunch of very popular WordPress page builders that might do the trick for you. Elementor, Beaver Builder, Divi, Bricks. These are the page builder plugins that do it best in my opinion. These vastly change the experience of how you build and manage a WordPress website, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Then there are what I call feature themes that are almost like having a page builder, but generally have more pre-designed starter sites to choose from and are giving you a bunch more patterns and templates to play with. Those are themes like, but not limited to, Cadence, Generate Press, Astra, and the Nev theme. It might have been hip to call these multi-purpose themes back in the day, but now they have so much more power and flexibility ship with them. Like a lot of questions in life, when you're asking, should you use one solution or the other, the answer is, it depends. It depends on your experience, your budget, your time, and what goals you have for your website project. Seek out a professional and spend some time consulting with them before you drain your time and your wallet. So let's wrap this up. I know it feels like we just scratched the surface here today, and that's because if you're just getting started, there might be so much more for you to learn. I ran a WordPress agency for over a decade, spent another decade in the hosting industry, and now I work at Gravity Forms, one of the longest running WordPress plugin companies in the ecosystem. There's a lot here. I urge you to spend time learning as much as you can about WordPress before dismissing it too quickly. I've seen past clients unwilling to invest time and dare I say the interest in learning the WordPress and open source way only to go to another platform and get locked in. Locked into higher fees, lack of flexibility, and more importantly, loss of a wide-ranging community excited to support and innovate on the platform. 
WordPress's greatest strengths are also its weaknesses. It can do a lot. There's many ways to achieve the same goal, and everyone has an opinion on how to do it. But it's open source. You can see it being made. You can weigh in with your opinion, and you can get involved, unlike any other critical web app that helps you with your livelihood, be it a side hustle selling bow ties or your day job as a C-suite executive. There's dozens of other WordPress educators like me on YouTube. There's hundreds of thousands of WordPress designers and developers out in the world. There's thousands of respected WordPress products and services and hosting companies to support you. WordPress can work, just give it a little time. If you're about to embark on a new WordPress journey and you have some questions and would like to schedule a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one where I can field those questions for you, perhaps you want to get on the fast track. Book a consult with me at the wpminute.com slash fast. That's the wpminute.com slash fast. That's it for today's video and thanks for watching. As always, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to learn next. And if you want to stay up to date for what's happening in the WordPress world, join our weekly newsletter at the wpminute.com slash subscribe. Thanks again. Thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.